before we create both the distressed metal effect which you can see on the edges here and the hot edge effect we need to create what's called a vertex map inside of Cinema 4D and that's going to allow us to isolate those effects to just the edges. It's very simple to just overlay a metallic texture on top of this and a luminance texture to the whole thing. But to get the effect which we're looking at here, we have to be more specific in how we map it. So we're going to get into some really technical stuff now and uh, this is, is going to be quite advanced compared to everything we've done up until this point. I'm going to remove this texture for now just so my logo stays grey. I prefer looking at this whilst I'm working. Then I'll click the logo and go to character and paint. Let's go to edge mode because that's what we are dealing with and if I zoom in a bit closer here. I can quickly try and paint something and uh, the reason why nothing is happening is because for this to work you need to paint where there is uh, some kind of corner or more segments than just a single line like here. So if I start over here, now you're gonna see some feedback. The area we just painted is now yellow and the rest of the logo is the kind of red color. Now I actually changed my interface settings to show a sort of washed out kind of red. By default you are going to see a redder color. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to edit and preferences and if we go to scheme colors and under the editor colors and if you scroll down there is something here called the vertex map 0%. Let me click this. By default, it's the full red color like this. Now, personally, I um, I don't like to look at this. It's too bright. And uh, after looking at it for too long, uh, my eyes start to go funny. So I just uh, went and desaturated this so it's a little bit easier on the eyes. Anyway, we can continue just painting around the edges, but uh, trying to do this manually with uh, the hand brush is not going to get you anywhere. You can see I'm painting all over the place here when I'm really just trying to get the edges. So here's what we can do. First of all, the strength of the paint tool needs to be set to 100%. And the mode, I'm just going to set it to erase and apply all just to remove my current paint. Then I'm going to get the loop selection tool, so U followed by L. And I want to select every edge that I want to paint onto. Let's just do one edge as an example first. If I go back to character and paint tool once again, I can set the mode back to add and then just click apply selected. And it's only gonna paint on that selection which I just created. And this is what we want to do to all the other edges that we want these effects to appear on. So if I go back to loop selection, I can just select all the edges pretty much. And uh, there's a method to this. If you remember earlier when we were doing the modeling, we beveled all the edges with a single subdivision and that gave us three lines for each edge. And uh, what we want to do now is select only the center lines and that's where we're going to be painting our vertex maps onto. I can click away from this vertex map tag uh, just because I prefer to work in the standard colors and just continue to make my selection. Uh, over here I only want the edge at the top but uh, of course this loop cuts all the way around including the surface here so I need to just deselect where I don't want any paint onto. This is going to be quite tedious so I'm going to fast forward and just review the selection afterward to help you guys make a similar selection. Okay, so that is the selection. We can just go around the scene here and make sure we haven't missed anywhere. Basically, all the edges 
and uh, every time I was selecting the loop in the middle just like this notice I didn't select the front surfaces and uh, the inside because if this really were a piece of metal you wouldn't have some uh, wear and tear on the inside you would only have it on the edges okay we can go back to our vertex tag go back to character and paint and then just click apply selected and that's going to paint onto the rest of the selection and what's great about this is if we re-enable the symmetry to mirror this to the back it will copy the paint too and if I enable subdiv it's gonna get smoothed out and this is going to look better when we start applying the texture let's switch this off for now and let me just quickly show you that this tag indeed is working let's create another texture and put this on top and then in this texture we're gonna to go to the alpha channel and under texture we're gonna to go to effects and vertex map it's all the way down here let's open this and we can drag our vertex map tag so now when I click render that white material is only going to appear on the edges there and this is exactly the effect we want to do we have isolated just those parts of the logo and now we can build the damage effect onto them we're gonna start with the scratched edges effect and do the glowing edges after so let's create the first texture let's call this scratches and we can use another Lumos shader this time we're not going to change much except for the illumination put this to 100 and then just choose a darker kind of gray I'll switch off the specular because we already have some built into the Lumos shader if you remember then I'm gonna go to the alpha channel and before I go any further I need to make sure that uh, image alpha is not switched on so I turn this off then in the texture section I can add a layer let's go in here go to shader and effects and vertex map we can open this and drop our vertex map tag let's go back a level and let's click image and get the scratched metal texture and this is the image right here it's just something I found on uh, on Google so let's open this and what I'm gonna do at this point just to help us see what's going on is I'm going to enable the interactive render region so hold AOT and R and let's apply this material to our logo and let's give it a cubic projection with maybe two by two tiles there's a missing texture tag in between our red texture and the scratches texture so let's remove this because I think it's causing an interference already you can start to see what's happening here it's very faint but uh, let's continue working on this I'm gonna right click the image and place it inside of a filter let's open this and I'm just going to colorize this so it is black and white currently this is being overlaid in front of the whole logo we only want it to be restricted to the edges and the way this works is we need to change the blending mode of this um, image layer to be lever and it's all the way down here so switch this on and now it's only going to appear on the edges that's the first step there's still a lot of adjustments that we need to do first of all if we just enable the symmetry and the subdivision surface that's going to improve how that looks straight away the subdivision surface smooths out how the vertex map is painted onto the edges so from this point onwards we need to keep this switched on for this effect to work properly if we look back to the preview you can see that the scratches on the edges are very well defined and a lot more visible than what we are looking at here and this is controlled by the contrast of your image now you can change this within the filter by for example going to the clipping and playing with the low clip and the high clip to try and get something which looks correct 
and you're going to start to see some changes. But what I like to do to just keep everything in the same layer, or at least the same level of the layer, I like to create two separate folders and let's make sure that they are not within each other. And I'll put the filter layer with the image into the top folder and the vertex map into the second folder then this means I have to set my filters blending mode back to normal and change the folders to lever. And we are now basically back to where we were a few seconds ago. But what I can do now is go to effect and clip color and do the same for the vertex map itself. And now I can control the contrast and how this edge is going to look using the the low and high clip in both these uh, sections. So the image folder and the vertex map itself. So at this stage, this is where you would uh, continue playing with uh, these numbers until you have the desired look. But uh, I'm not going to do that in the interest of time and trying to keep this tutorial as short as possible. I'm just going to use the numbers which I used in the preview because I know they work and uh, they're going to give me exactly the right look. So for the opacity of the first folder, this was set to 7.5 and uh, the clipping values for this were reversed to begin with. So I set this to 100 and the high clip to 0. And this basically flipped the black and white values of the image. But then I ended up dialing this back in to 50 and 25. The filter image layer itself stayed at 100%. The vertex map folder was set to 50 with a low clip of 0 and a high clip of 100 and the vertex map layer stayed at 100 as well. And these settings are what gave me the final look. I advise you to use the same settings just so we can stay on the same page but elsewhere I would recommend playing with uh, these numbers so you can understand the relationships between them and uh, the effect on the on how those edges are going to, to look. Let's finish this section off. I'm going to copy this filter layer, go to the normal channel, and under texture, let's get the normalizer effect. And this is something which is only available in release 14 and above. If you don't have the normalizer, you can just stick to the normal bump channel, but I'm gonna use this here, just paste my channel. And I'm going to set the strength to 200. I think I need to invert this so the scratches are sort of going into the texture rather than protruding out. Then I'm going to go to the reflection channel and I'm going to have a brightness of 50 with a Fresnel effect and set that to 50 as well. And then I'm going to add these two sections together to give me the final look. And that's the end of this section then. I can zoom out here, go to this sky object, go to Cinema 4D Tags and Compositing and Untick Scene by Camera. And uh, let me just center this up and hit a preview render. And you can see we have the scratched edges effect and uh, it looks great. In the next section, we're gonna be creating the hot edge effect. Stay tuned.